The speaker stood behind the podium and addressed the audience. At the five minute mark in his talk, he incorrectly named both the company and the products represented by the sales professionals he was speaking in front of. This was a group that I was a senior leader of. The result of his talk? One embarrassed leader, one embarrassed meeting planner, and worst of all, 250 disconnected audience members. The speaker's presence was only memorable because he was a sports celebrity. Money wasted. If you're looking for a speaker for your next sales meeting, conference, broker dealer event, road show, or training symposium, Wholesaler Masterminds Speakers Bureau wants to help. Wholesaler Masterminds Speakers Bureau will connect you and your event with exactly the right speaking professional. Find out more about Wholesaler Masterminds Speakers Bureau at wmmspeakers.com. Welcome to the only podcast on the planet dedicated to exploring the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesalers and their leaders. This is the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. I'm your host, the founder of Wholesaler Masterminds, Rob Shore. Wholesalers, welcome back to another episode of the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. Wholesalers, if we've ever worked together in coaching, if you've ever seen me come to your event and present live, you know I talk about the importance of advisor reconnaissance. I want you to be able to blow the advisor's hair back. I want you to be able to melt the natural icicles that exist around any sales situation. And the way that you're going to melt those icicles is through the amount of information that you have about the financial advisor, prospect, and or current client for that matter, how much you know about them and can lessen that sales tension that's in the room. And, and if we've ever had a chance to connect with one another on a live basis, you know I always talk about a book. And the book is Take the Cold Out of Cold Calling and I talk about a site called yougotthenews.com. And I wanna to talk today with the originator of both of those. You see, he is an internationally recognized expert on sales intelligence and online reputation management. He's been named one of the world's top 25 most influential sales leaders and his best-selling book, the one I just mentioned, Take the Cold Out of Cold Calling, is in multiple editions and was named Sales Book of the Year. Through his No More business improvement programs, he's trained leading organizations and entertained tens of thousands of people around the globe. He's been featured in thousands of newspapers, magazines, television, and radio programs, as well as websites, and he's won numerous awards, including a Gold Award at the International Film Festival and a Cody Award, the Oscars of the software industry. He serves on the boards of directors for numerous technology companies and he's a past finalist for Inc. Magazine Entrepreneur of the Year. Wholesalers, we are going to welcome Sam Richter to the show. Sam, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much. What a nice introduction. It is absolutely. Awesome. I, uh, Go I ahead. To uh, record that and let my kids and wife listen to that. That was really good. Well, it, it'll be on iTunes for for uh, uh, awesome forever. So you just. D- d- have them download, Sam. We're counting downloads. Have them download. You got it. <laughs> Let's talk about advisor reconnaissance. So wh- why is sales intelligence important? I mean, it, it, it sounds like an obvious answer, but I know you have lots of information about really the, the, the importance of it. Tell us more about that. Well, I think, you know, let's look at our own lives, Rob. I mean, the reality is, and, and I don't mean to be crass, but, but here's the truth. All of us, and certainly every advisor, is massively passionate about one thing. What is it? It's themselves. We all care about ourselves. And all too often, uh, what we do as wholesalers is we'll walk in and we'll say, you know, hey, uh, Rob, thanks so much for spending an hour with me today. I really don't know anything about you, but my marketing team put together this beautiful three-ring binder with 74 color tabs, and we're going to go through these. And, and here's the really neat thing. When we're done, we'll have a couple minutes left over where you can ask questions of me. Now, obviously, no wholesaler talks that way, but the reality is, unless you're talking to that advisor in the way that the advisor wants to be talked to, the things that they care about, that very well could be what the advisor is hearing, because they don't care what you have to sell, but they're massively passionate about themselves. And, And real quickly, this isn't a concept that's new. If we go back to the beginning of time, when people were peddlers, um, when my grandfather at his drugstore, uh, he knew his customers. He knew that this customer also came in and bought milk and bread, and he knew this customer had a couple of little kids, and 
and they would always buy a fire truck. And so when he talked to them, he talked to them in ways that were relevant to what they cared about. And unfortunately, with technology and Skype and text messaging and email, we've almost taken the, the personalization or the, for those of us with CRM systems, we've taken the R, the relationship, out of our business relationships. So frankly, sales intelligence is just a fancy way of saying get to know people before the meeting. And the, the tactical way of how to do that is using the tools that we use every day, Google, social media, the invisible web, using these tools to get that information before you walk in the door. All right, let me, let me just mention this if I could, because you know, you know I'm aligned with you 100% spot on, and wholesalers, what I want to, what I, what I want to tell you this for a minute, okay? Heaven forbid that you, Mr. and Ms. Wholesaler, are still living somewhere in the 1990s where you felt it comfortable to plop down in the guest chair of the financial advisor, pull out your yellow pad and say, so tell me about your business. Because anybody that walks into a financial advisor today and says, so tell me about your business at a minimum, will just get a sideways look and at a maximum might just get thrown out. (laughs) So, And and you, you know, the first part of sales intelligence is right there. What's the first words out of your mouth? I believe your first words out of the mouth should be about the other person. Yeah. So it could be an award they've won. Hey, I just saw that you were, your firm was named you know, United Way Volunteer of the Year. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. could be something personal. Hey, before I meet with people, you know, I do a little bit of homework, and I, I, saw your, uh, I saw your kid just scored three goals to send the soccer team to the state championship. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Every advisor is going to differ, but the first word that you know needs to be about the other person. You know, I want to I get your opinion on something, Sam. You know, sometimes... When I talk about this concept, and I got to imagine since it, since it is your life, you get it a lot. How do you remove the creepy factor from it? I mean, I know sure. what, I know what my advice is, but I know you have more more wise and more sage advice because you live in this world every day. How is it not creepy that I say, "Hey, your son just scored three goals"? Yeah, it's the exact it was the language I just used uh, just a moment ago. Let me let me go at it, and I'll break it down into three parts. Part number one. Hey, you know, before I meet with people, I, I just want to let you know I do a little bit of homework. You're a busy advisor. I don't want to waste your time. Um, right there, you're telling the person you respect them. And it's kind of interesting. It's like, wait a second. So they did a little homework. And then th- this next one's really important because let's be honest. That advisor set up the meeting with you three weeks ago. Today, when they saw your name on the calendar, they were like, why do I need to meet with this guy? Oh, my God, I've got so much to do. Fine, we'll meet. If I walk in and I've got my three-ring binder with 74 tabs, and I start going through stuff, their mind starts to wander. They're not focused on me. They're thinking about their dry cleaning. So the next phrase I use is, so the first phrase, hey, before I meet with people, I like to do a bit of homework. You're a busy person. I don't want to waste your time. And then I say this, and guess what I found? Oh, so that, what do I do? So what, that's, what happens? So that's important right there. I just, and guess what I found? So I just want to be really, really specific here. You say, and guess what I found? Yes. Okay. So and they get why, their attention. So, so that's to draw them in. That's to get their attention. Absolutely. Okay. Because you know what, 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 what'd you find? And now they're a little nervous. And you say, you know, I was I was looking at that local newspaper, or I looked at your LinkedIn profile, or I saw, you know, I it could be anything. Um, and, and and so you kind of build up their fear a little bit. Guess what I found? Oh my God, what you find? And then you bring it back down. Um, so guess what I found? Hey, I saw that. Um, uh, your kids, you know, uh, uh, just happened to be Googling your name and, and your son's name showed up and he just scored three goals to send the team to the soccer state championship. Yeah, you must be so proud. And then here's the next magic phrase. Can you tell me about that? Uh, and then guess what you do after you say, can you tell me about that? You shut up. You be quiet. Because the person's going to tell you so much more about themselves than doing it the old way with the you just referenced with the legal pad. You know, can you tell me the signs of your firm? What's your assets under management? <laughs> What's your mix of qualified versus non-qualified plans? <laughs> Frankly, you gotta know that stuff before you walk in. Of course, of course. All right, so here's a really important question. Well, actually, let's save the when do I find time to do it with still building the case, not only of the why we should do it, but how it's not the most Herculean effort to do it. In fact, it's pretty straightforward. And, and it really is. It, and before I get there, Sam, I do want to I want to kind of ask you a question about this. When I when, when I speak to my clients about it, I'm looking for nuggets that touch the heart versus mm-hmm. versus the head, because I feel yeah. that if I can talk about something like the three goals in the soccer tournament, 
it's more impactful than I see your firm won an award. Now, granted, they're happy they won an award, but they're probably more proud about their son. What, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. Oh, absolutely. But the reality is sometimes you can't find the personal stuff. Yes. Um, you can usually find something in the firm. Yeah. Now, now uh, I'm talking more general. Financial advisors, there's in general, there's usually more about their about their personal lives because typically, as advisors, they they are out there in the community, yes. so they're sponsoring the uh, you know the Girl Scout dinner. They're the head of the United Way. Uh, they're they are on the committee for the local theater board. So those kinds of things. The good news is in the the, the industry that everybody here has chosen, uh, it makes it fairly easy to do sales intelligence because again, most advisors do like to have a public profile or a public persona. All right, so let, let's now venture off into the, where am I getting this data from? So sure. there's some obvious that I know you're going to mention, and then we're particularly interested in the not so obvious, because that's why you're the expert. So tell us more. You bet. Well, let me first, um, let me first uh, you know, answer that question by answering an earlier question of, of how long should this take? Okay. And the answer is I, I, teach it, I teach what's called the three by five. So let's just get right to this point. It's three minutes to find five pieces of information or five minutes to find three pieces of information. And with a mobile device, there's not an excuse. Now, I've got my book. It's 312 pages. Uh, you're obviously not going to go through all of those things in five minutes. So let me give you the, the three or four things that I think uh, everyone on the call today should be doing before they go into any advisory practice. Now, again, we're going to already assume you've looked at their website, so you know a little bit about the firm, you know a little bit about the, the, the types of things that they do in their value proposition. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to type in the person's name in Google. So I'll put in Rob Shore within quotation marks, and then I might put in the city where you live, Newport Beach, because you know there's a lot of Rob Shores out there in the country. Now, I'm using quotation marks because when you put words within quotation marks, you're pulling up information um, or you're treating those words like a single phrase rather than an and. If I, if I just typed in Rob Shore, it might pull up articles or websites about uh, Rob Smith on the, 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 the shores of a beach. Um, but by putting it within quotes, I'm telling the search engine the words within quotes must be in that exact order. Okay. Now, you're going to pull up a list of Google search results, which we're all familiar with. On top of that, Google, you know, on top of the results page, there's going to be uh, a navigation menu. And one of those navigation buttons is News. Click on the News button and find out if there's any articles that are out there. Now, uh, there might be a lot of articles or maybe nothing. Another button, once, and you can do this on websites or articles within Google, there's a little button called Search Tools. If people are listening right now, go into Google, just type in anything, type in you know, pizza, and, and you'll see the button called Search Tools. When you click the Search Tools button, a little drop-down menu appears that allows you to sort your Google search results. So whether it's website results or in the scenario I was just giving, with news articles, I can actually sort my results by date. Only show me articles or only show me web pages that have been updated in the past year, the past month, the past week, the past day, even the past hour. Because if you get fortunate enough, you can find a, an article, uh, something new that, that's happened in the past hour, that's really cool, or the past day. Hey, I saw that, you know, last, wow, last night, uh, I saw that your kids scored those three goals. So even Google, that, that tip, those tips right there, just put the person's name within quotation marks, try the news button, try the search tools button. Those are probably three techniques that will have taken your searching, which might have used to take 30 minutes. Now you can focus down and probably see if there's anything valuable in 30 seconds. So, so we, we have to stop there because those are such massive ideas, okay? So wholesalers, number one, put your search criteria in quotes. So in this case, Sam Richter goes in quotes so we don't get random Sams and random Richters. Mm -hmm. Use the news button so I'm focusing in on events. And by the way, just so we understand, where's this news coming from? Is it is it local publications? Is it national publications? Is Great it question. Yeah, fire away. Yeah, Tell me what it is. Typical Google News is going to be across the board, but typically your Google News results are going to be your larger news sites. So, you know, the Wall Street Journal, CNN, um, and you'll get some smaller ones in there too, but they also don't archive them 
for very long. So if something doesn't show up in, in Google News, I'll often go to the, in, and we call this the invisible website, invisible because uh, you probably never heard of it, or um, or it's not easily accessible. The, the, the search itself is not easily accessible via Google. But there's a news site you mentioned earlier, yougotthenews.com, Y-O-U-G-O-T, T-H-E-N-E-W-S dot com. And that will pull up those lo- local news articles. It'll pull up from the, it'll, you'll get the, the Wall Street Journal, but you also get the Poughkeepsie Times, the Lakeshore Weekly News, the Catholic Digest, and everything in between. And I think it's important and, to mention. And that's where people show up. Yeah, and it's important to mention, Sam, that, you know, I, I, I did a search recently. To, you know, you Google yourself, right? You want to see what's out there. Sure. I did a You Got the News on Me. It pulled up a story from Investment News in 2005. So to your point. Yeah about archiving, and, you know, I like to call it nuggets. You never know what nuggets you're going to find. And and the fact that, you know, Sam's, wholesaler Sam is being quite modest. It, he put, you got the news together. So it, it's a it's a brilliant site, and it's so gosh darn helpful. But I want to go back for one second. We talked about, sure. in, in quotes, we talked about clicking on the news button. And the one where I just had one of those kind of cartoonish, you know, picture the cartoon character going, blah, 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 what is, is when is the whole search button piece, right? Because it, it, yeah, it'll, search it'll, tool. Oh, it, it allows you to narrow it down. I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's really huge. And, and uh, I, I use that. I mean, I would say I use that all the time Yeah. Um, because oftentimes you get so much junk uh, and, and it allows you to just, to just focus uh, right in. Um, now, another one that's going to be obvious, and it's and again, when, when you say the three by five, three minutes trying to find five pieces of information, now this is one that's so obvious, and most people forget to do it. Look at somebody's LinkedIn profile. Mm-hmm. Almost all advisors will have a LinkedIn profile. Now, it didn't used to be this way because of compliance, but I would say in the last year, almost everybody I research uh, will have a LinkedIn profile. And now, when you're looking at someone's LinkedIn profile, we're trying to find something uh, very specific. And what that is is something in common. Maybe the person went to the same school you did, different years, but same school. Um, maybe they maybe they used to work where you have a client, uh, where you have another customer. Um, and hopefully, now not everybody has these kinds of things on their LinkedIn profiles, but again, wholesalers are fortunate because advisors want to be seen as humans, right? They, 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 they don't want to be seen as this... Um, this uh, could be uh, the human version of a of a robo advisor. People are buying the advisor, and so therefore the advisor is more likely to put things like interests, um, nonprofits that they belong to. Uh, they belong, you know, they help in the boys and girls club. And so you got to look at someone's LinkedIn profile. Frankly, that's sometimes the only thing you need to do. Sometimes the LinkedIn profile is so good. And, and again, what we're looking for is something in common, something relevant. So if you see that they're on the rotary and you're in the rotary, you talk about what service projects you do. If you see that they uh, that they mention that they join that they enjoy travel, uh, you say, hey. Now, no, again, you have to be genuine. If you hate travel, you don't do this. But you say, hey, Rob, you know, before I meet with people, I do the homework. You're a busy person. Don't want to waste your time. Guess what I found? Hey, I look at your LinkedIn profile. Again, right there, blood pressure goes down. Of course, you looked at my LinkedIn profile. Look at your LinkedIn profile, and I saw that you really enjoy travel. And that's one of my wife and I's favorite hobby. Where's a great place to go? Can I ask you about that, Sam? Because one of the pieces, sure. and, and I, I, I'm not disagreeing, but I want to I want to just mention wholesalers and, and get Sam's Sam's input on this. So one of the things that advisors don't like is mm-hmm. the six degrees of separation game. Sure. So. I go onto a uh, advisor's website and I see they went to Cornell and I walk mm-hmm. in and I say, oh, my great uncle Al on my mother's side no. went to Cornell. Yeah. Right? So that's not what we're saying about common. No, I think it's, it's, it's because it has to be genuine. I mean, nobody cares if my great uncle on my mother's side went to Cornell. They might care if I went to Cornell. Mm-hmm. I, I would say the, the probably the most is two degrees. If my mm-hmm. daughter... Uh, is going to, you know, if I say, hey, my daughter's, uh, you know, she's 18, senior in college, and God, Cornell is one of the top. Uh, I'd love to, love to learn, you know, wh- what did you think? Do you think she'd have a great experience there? Um, but if I said, yeah, my my uh, my wife's cousin, her kid on, uh, well, it's not really my wife, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's my cousin's wife on the third degree, he's thinking of going to Cornell. No, nah, that's not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that because I, I, it's important to me that I, I not necessarily leave the wholesalers with a, with a different impression of that, of that, you know, finding that, that common ground. Um, yeah. 
All right, so we got a few minutes left, only a couple sure. actually. I want to get your opinion. Now you gave us some some tips and tricks on Google. You talk about the invisible web. Get, I, I'm fascinated by this, and I know it's so helpful, Sam, and you're so good at it. Give me a couple more. I'm going to put you on the spot. Give me give me a couple more. Oh, They're going to help me. Yeah. Well, of course, Facebook. You know, uh, now Facebook is uh, unfortunately Facebook is a really bad search engine. So you know, if I go in and type in Rob Schroeder in Facebook, I'm going to get so many results, and I've got to scroll screws, and, and I got to hopefully know what you look like. And so I actually built a search engine that just launched it a couple of days ago, and it's called You Got Social. It used to be called You Got Facebook until I got the nasty cease and desist letter from Mr. Zuckerberg's team. Well, that was so nice of him. To, you, yeah, it was, it was kind of him to reach out. Um, <laughs> so I changed it to uh, YouGotSocial.com. And what's really cool about it is um, I can say I want, I'm looking for, uh, take a super common name, I'm looking for Joe Smith, um, but I'm looking for Joe Smith, uh, I can't remember even his firm name, but I know he went to the University of Texas, and he's a huge fan of the Oakland Raiders football team. So you can actually build your own query, and I can say Joe Smith, and then click the and button, little pull-down menu, um, job title, uh, financial advisor, uh, click the next and button. Um, likes, uh, uh, Oakland Raider football, click the next button. Uh, school, University of Texas, search, and you'll show up. You can also do this. Now, what I'm about to share is more for an advisor searching for a client, uh, less so for a wholesaler. But it's, it's actually kind of freaky to play around with. You can go in there and say, hmm, find me all people in California who speak German, who went to New York University like ballet and like uh, dogs, and it'll pull up the thousand people that fit that profile. So I just launched the darn thing a couple of days ago, and um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not even sure I understand the full power of it yet. But I, I think it's going to be really, really cool. Wow, that is just so uh, it, it's awesome, and I hope because wholesale is what's happening with this new series of the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show is we're posting content from our guests. And Sam, I hope when you give us the content to put with this, you may tell us a little more about YouGotSocial.com. But today, to, I'm so glad and I thank you for that. Today, we are flat out of time. Wholesalers, advisor reconnaissance, hugely important. Do your social intelligent, find nuggets, touch the advisor's heart, touch the advisor's head, find some first or second degree common ground. Use your quotations, use the news button, use your search tools, put all of this goodness together. Go out and get a copy of Take the Cold Out of Cold Calling, because that's going to help a whole bunch. Sam Richter, I know you're at a conference, and I know you're on the go today, and I want to thank you for taking time out to be with us. Thank you. It's uh, always great to It's always great to see what you're doing to help wholesalers, because it's a tough job out there, and I think it's people listening to these kinds of shows where they can get one nugget or two nuggets to get the advantage over the other guy. Because the reality is you're in a commodity world. The only thing you have is you, the individual. And if you can use these techniques that you're learning on Rob's show, that's going to differentiate you from the other guy. Wholesalers, that's what we're about. Building your MQ, your memorability quotient. Come back next time for another episode of the new Wholesaler Masterminds Radio. Thank you for listening, wholesalers. Visit us at wholesalermasterminds.com. 